Hello, my name is Alexandre Bergel, and I will present a paper uh, called um, Generating Object Oriented Source Code Using Genetic uh, Programming. So, this is a joint work with Vicente and myself, and we are from the University of Chile. So, source code generation is considered as a difficult, challenging, and very promising research area. So, uh, source code generation is essential for other research areas such as bug fixing and, and soft auto repair. And furthermore, uh, source code generation is really the primary target of genetic programming. And we, in this paper, our paper is about using genetic programming to uh, generate source code. I will focus a bit on, on genetic programming now. So genetic programming maintains a population of individuals, and each individual is, is a program. And this program is expressed uh, using a, a tree, which is called the abstract, ab, abstract syntax tree. At each generation, the genetic programming evolves individuals in order to create better, more fit uh, uh, individuals. And then the algorithm uses some genetic operators, such as the mutation and the crossover. So at each generation, genetic programming improves the quality of the, of the population. And this evolution is driven by a function called the fitness function. The fitness function evaluates each individual by compiling and executing the, the, the program. And um, so here's a small example. If I have this expression here, and this expression can be represented using this tree here. Okay, and if I have two individuals, you know, one the, one the left and one the right, and these two, you know, assuming that these two individuals belong to the same population at a given time, then the new individuals can be formed by recombining part of those trees. For example, here, uh, 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 this node here can replace the, the previous one in order to form uh, a new short program. And uh, hopefully this new program will be better than two parents in terms of the fitness function. Okay, so source code generation uh, he, uh, has been the topic of uh, ICSI paper in 2009. Uh, this paper is titled uh, Automat uh, Automatically Finding Patches Using Genetic Programming. So this is a program that uses uh, genetic programming to uh, generate source code to fix bugs. Um, so in this paper, genetic programming is used to generate source code and, um, and all the experiments were conducted using the C. C programming language. So C is a statically typed procedural language, which means that for a given um, piece of code of, in C, the statically type uh, means that each variable has a type that is known uh, at compile time. So we know exactly at compile time, statically we know like what is the type of these variables. It means that during the execution, we know the range of value that can, that can be accepted by, by um, by those variables. And furthermore, like each function uh, knows like what are the, 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 um, the inputs typed and what is the output. So we know that for example, the check prime number return an int, for example. And furthermore, C is a procedural language, which means that whenever I refer to a function, I know exactly statically which function uh, will be executed. The same, the same piece of code written in a dynamically type object on the programming language, things are very different. Even though like on the surface, it looks a bit similar, but it's very, there are some profound differences. For example, like all the variables, like there is no type information. It means that we do not know, for example, that N must refer to an int or color or string, whatever. So it's just a variable that we have no idea of what during the, the when this, Function here is called what which kind of value we should provide, and furthermore, when there is a reference to a function to a method, then we don't know statically which method will be executed. You know, we may have several implementation of the square root function in the systems, but statically we don't know which one we will use. So it means that generating source code for a dynamically type object oriented programming language, then there is much you know is much less deterministic than using a um, uh, statically type procedural language. So dynamically typed object oriented programming language is uh, are very, very common those days. So here, this is the list of the most popular programming languages though, and uh, currently used. And those are the one that are dynamically typed. And those are also the one that are object oriented. 
So, and currently we do not know whether we can apply genetic programming to generate source code for those languages. We know that it works for the, the C programming languages, but we do not know whether we can use genetic programming to generate code for those languages. So this is exactly what uh, this, uh, the, the, the scope of this paper. So the, 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 the research question we, we, we have addressed is whether genetic programming based source code generation can be applied to dynamically typed programming language. And our short paper explored the use of genetic programming to generate object-oriented source code in a dynamically typed setting. The research showed that for one line statements uh, can be generated with a precision of 51%. So it means that just to produce one line, one single line, genetic programming can be used to generate those lines. And we have a precision of 51%. Okay, so we, uh, for, for our experiment, we use the Faro programming language, the Faro Spontor. So Faro is a very simple and highly expressive language. All the computation is expressed using objects and objects and messages. And this uh, reduce significantly the amount of, of, for the search space. I mean, the, the number of different kinds of nodes that must be involved into ISC, this, uh, this is extremely reduced to, essentially two syntactic constructs, message sent and viable accesses. Since in Faro, everything is an object and object uh, communicate each other by sending messages, uh, we just need to care about message sent and viable accesses. There is no operator, for example, to, you know, to express aromatic operation. There is no operators to create instances of variables. Everything happens by just sending messages. And uh, furthermore, like we, we, we focus on generating one line of code. And uh, so we, um, we use genetic programming to ge generate the body of an arbitrary design method. So if we have one application and uh, in that application, we pick one method that has one uh, statement in it. So the method is long of one statement. And then we are looking at how genetic programming can generate the body of, of, of that method. So we're focusing on, on a method that have exactly one statement in that body. And the reason is to solely focus on the code generation. You know, we are avoiding all the location of the generation as was done in this uh, uh, 2009 XE paper. So here is a short example. If we have the method called max value X that is defined the class as abstract plot. And this method has just one statement as uh, in definition, it returns and it returns the value written by the expression self defined values x max. So in, in, in Java, this expression here will be written this dot defined values x dot max. So whenever there is a, a dot in Java, in Faro, this is a space, simply. And the question is whether a genetic programming can generate this expression here. So the, the methodology is the following, you know, just to give a brief overview of what of, of methodology is the following. If we take one application and uh, uh, each pixel of that, uh, of that picture here, each pixel is one character of that application. So in the middle of it, we have our expression, self-defined values x max in the middle of it. And if that application comes with some tests, uh, let's assume that there is 10 unit tests and the 10 tests are passing. If we remove that expression, if we put a hole in it, you know, like we, we remove that expression, we have, you know, most of the tests will fail. Maybe not all of them, you know, can say that there is one test that passes, but all of them are failing. Uh, the genetic programming algorithm, we try to fill this hole with an expression that try to maximize the, 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 the number of passing tests. You know, the genetic programming can try to fill this hole with an expression, maybe this one. You know, this one, self-defined values X is a bit better than just having an empty hole because some more tests are, are passing. And then the algorithm, like through the evolution, is trying to, uh, to, to maximize the number of passing tests. You know, it can come with that, uh, with that expression until the evolution leads to the, to the correct, um, to the correct uh, expression that we have removed. So the, the genetic programming is, is searching for the expression that maximizes the number of passing unit tests. That is really the essence of our methodology. 
So the, 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 the overall like a workflow for, for work is the following. So we have seven steps. The first one is to pick an application that has some, uh, some test. You know, we, we have the application, we have the test, we run all the tests. And while, the, while we run the test, we monitor all the values that are passed as an argument, all the values that are written by, by methods. And then also we extract the call graph, you know, like which function, which method are calling which other fun, uh, method. So once we have run this test, uh, the, the unit test, and we have all the information about the, so, some, some information about the, uh, the execution, then we can infer what are the classes that are involved in, 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 the, in, the, in the application. So it's, you know, understanding like which libraries this the, 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 or application is calling is the first step. Like what are the classes that might be involved into the, the, the overall uh, execution? Then we can deduce the method signatures uh, from the, all the values that are passed around. So we have, uh, uh, a signature that we we we, we infer, and then uh, we also can use uh, all this information to identify what are the syntactical elements that are likely to be called during the the, the that must be called during the evolution. In particular, like you know, which methods are likely to be called, which variables are likely to be called to to be accessed. And uh, we use the methods that are covered by the text, uh, the, the, the test executions, and also we may use some variables such as this, the self this. So we have a number of hyperparameters, and um, in particular, like when we call a method or when we involve a class uh, during the evolution, then some classes are more likely to be called, some methods are more likely to be called than some other one. So those are some hyperparameters that we, uh, we identify um, using some static uh, analysis on, on a large corp uh, corpus. So from a large piece, uh, amount of code or faro code, then we, we, we compute a number of, uh, of metrics that I use um, to weight the probability to pick a particular element. And then we, uh, we generate the, 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 the code uh, using genetic programming. We compile all the generated methods. So we have the application, we have a hole. We try to fill the hole with each individual of our uh, population. We run the test and then we can identify the best, um, the best individual. So we have uh, two weight uh, mechanisms. So the priority can be used, you know, priority of some elements can be used. Uh, can be employed whenever we want to, uh, to do a mutation or generation of a node. Now we have two weight mechanisms. The first one is uniform, saying that all the methods and all the variables have the same priority to be chosen. And we have uh, the similarity weight, which means that if we try to fill the body of a method, we look for uh, other methods in the system and, and we try to, to use the weight determined on the other method that have the same name. So the, the intuition behind is that if I have two methods that have the same name, then you know, it is likely that the body will looks like will be similar. And that's really the idea behind this weight mechanism. So as an experiment, we, we, uh, we took the Russell application. So we took a part of Russell. In Russell, we, we picked 99 methods that have exactly one statement. So these 99 methods have mediators, setters, and some other method that we qualify as, as complex. The complex method for us is, is a method that is not a mutator or a setter. Then we have uh, 68 unit tests and, uh, and yeah, and then we run the experiment and then we, 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 we compare the different weights it has uniform or similarity. As, as a result, we have, um, we have the following. So our approach works particularly well for the accessors. Okay, so either uniform similarity gives over 90% of precision. For the setters also, we have relatively good, uh, good, um, good results, particularly for the similarity. But the most interesting aspect here is the, is the complex. You know, complex, it means that the, the, genetic, algorithm, the genetic programming um, algorithm is trying to generate the body of some functions that are uh, not trivial. And, uh, and we have a precision of 12%. Okay, so that is uh, 
uh, operation. So we uh, presented an automatic technique to generate dynamically typed object on the code. And our approach is to use the genetic programming algorithm and a weight uh, mechanism, weight systems. We try different weights without having a, positive, a significant positive effect. You know, overall, we have a precision of 51% and 12% uh, for non-accessors methods. So that we qualify as complex method. Okay, so that is uh, the presentation. So our approach is about generating methods in, in a, that I have exactly one statement. We pick one application, we, we, we have a hole and, and the genetic algorithm is trying to fill this hole by, by uh, using the number of passing tests. And we have um, uh, a workflow that describes different uh, seven steps of, our, uh, of, our, of methodology. And then the results is giving us like 12% of the of precision. Overall 51%. And uh, overall, but the next twelve percent for the uh, the complex method. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>